Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Today I'm just going to be walking around to kind of show you what uh, is beautiful in the garden right now. So here you're looking at some of the planters that I have on the east side of the garden. These are the two pieces of the incredible hydrangeas that I divided from the garden earlier this spring. And I have a second piece that I also put in this planter right up against the wall of our house here. And you can see that uh, this plant has many of the stems that have flowers that have been flopped onto the side of the container. So next spring, I may have to get a couple of peony, peony cages to hold the plants up. And the planter here gets, I would say, about three hours or so of sunlight, a little bit of morning sun, and a little bit of uh, early evening, late afternoon sun. But it actually bloomed beautiful for me this year, which is quite amazing. And there are still a few flowers that are still developing on this uh, plant here. And below that are just sort of a random mix of annuals that I uh, sow and grew from seeds that were collected last year. So in this planter, I've got a few snapdragons uh, plants that I sow from seeds that I bought actually. This one I did not uh, collect last year. And I love, love dra uh, snapdragons actually. And the mix that I got actually comes in various different colors. I've got some magenta colors like this. And then I've got a peachy yellow here uh, next to it. And then I've got some lighter um, pinks and, and all sorts of colors. And I think they're just absolutely gorgeous. And so easy to sow as well. And right next to that, I've got a few calabracoas from seeds that I collected last year, and they are, these are absolutely stunning in my eyes. This is a magenta kind of a color with the bright yellow lime green uh, throat, and that looks just really stunning. And I love planting calabracoas from seeds because the color mix of blooms that you get are always different than the original parent plants that you got the seeds from. So it's a total surprise for me every single year. So this is a Jantar cedar that uh, I transplanted from the garden. It was not doing well in that spot. And this past winter that we had almost killed uh, them. I have two, uh, one on the other side of the garden and one over here now. They may have to go next spring. So we're going to see how they do in the container this winter. But I have a pretty good idea that they may not survive our winter. Uh, that's going to come next. And over here in this uh, container, I've got the uh, Limelight Prime, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous hydrangea. Now, this is a recent buy this year, so I'm not sure how it's going to be, but so far, it exceeds all expectations that I've got for a Limelight. So here's the Limelight on the east side of the garden. It looks like the blooms are actually larger and there are more of them that are developed further along compared to the limelight on the west side of the garden. So I don't know if you notice uh, that the limelight trees that I have in the back have now grown so much taller than they, what they were last year. They are both at least seven feet tall and once the panicles open up they will probably be slightly taller than seven feet. And here you can see one of my Serrano Oriental Lilies. It's just started blooming a few days ago. And right next to it, I have the William Morris David Austin Rose. And this one, like I said in one of my postings, um, that I thought I had lost it. And that one day I was about to remove it when I found out that it had a little growth from the ground. And so I left it. And thankfully, I did delay the removal of the rose because look what I see now. It's got some beautiful blooms and there's a bud that is about to open up. Now all the other roses, uh, but I've got I cut them all back except this one so I can't wait to see it again I love love the blooms on this just really really intense that apricot color and the scent is just really strong and I love the way that the petals open up so just a really really lovely rose and I'm so happy that I didn't lose it uh, due to our harsh winter that we had this past year and here's what the blooms look like once they have been aged for a day or two. 
And here is the container of uh, the firelight hydrangea stem that I um, had accidentally discovered this past spring. So I took it and planted it in this container and it has been blooming beautifully. Um, it's just really uh, a gorgeous, beautiful hydrangea and I would say it's probably one of my most favorite hydrangeas. I love the fact that uh, it's got a semi-lacy kind of a look to the panicles and it's got these large, large um, infertile florets with some uh, fertile parts to the panicles. So the container is underplanted with annuals that I collected from seeds and sold uh, from the garden. And at the time when I was planting up this container, I actually did not get to see what the color of the blooms were because the plants were actually quite small and they have they they uh, didn't start to flower yet. But I'm so glad that um, that they all kind of go together now. So the calabracos here are sort of a, a blue in color, and then I've got some petunia here. That's it's like a salmon pink. Uh, almost like a coral pink that's just beautiful and of all the petunia seeds that I collected only this one came out to be this color because the others are more of a magenta pink that I've got and the calabraca actually goes very well with the royal carpet uh, alyssum that I've got here as well and this combo of uh, hydrangea as the centerpiece and underplanted all the different annuals here and all the colors actually kind of go all well together. And I would have to say that this is probably one of my most, most favorite uh, surprise mix of um, uh, centerpiece and annuals that I've ever planted. I just really, really love this container. And, I, and like I said, it was a surprise how all the colors of the annuals ended up coming together so beautifully. And looking at the east side of the garden here, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, everything on the east side this year, including all of the bobos, are very behind in terms of blooming. Usually by this time, which is uh, we're near the end of July, bobos should be in bloom already. So I don't know why, but we still have lots of panicles that still have not turned white yet. Whereas um, if you look back the last year's um, video around this time, everything was pretty much all in white so I have no clue why but uh, it's strange how things change from year to year and here you can uh, see my invincible wee white it's now a creamy white color and then underneath I don't know if you remember from uh, the video last year but I had this everlast dark pink dianthus lining the whole entire border here and I think I've lost uh, a good 70% of all the plants I had. I had more than I think 10 of these um, as a drift all the way down and I think I have about three here is two and I have about one or two more at the other side but I've lost most of it because of our harsh winter that we had uh, this past year. And here in this view, you can kind of see my giant uh, serrano lilies have just started to bloom. Uh, and the scent, like I said before, is just super strong. And last night when I was out, I could, I could truly say that I wanted to sleep uh, in the garden last night because the scent was just so soothing and I know it might be a bit too strong because I know people who've said to me that uh, it's just too intense but I actually love it it's a uh, it's hard to describe and I'm not very good at describing uh, scent so I'm not gonna even try but it, I think it's just one of the most beautiful uh, scent besides all the David Austin roses this is the next best best thing that I have uh, in the garden and here's a closer look of the firelight that I've got uh, on the east side. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of chlorosis on the plant. And the blooms are actually a little behind compared to the one on the uh, west side, which I'll show you in a bit. And also a little behind the one in the container as well. So I do have some panicles on the lava lamp that are about to open and I've got plenty that have not yet opened. And this one, if you remember, um, the panicles are sort of a semi, sort of a lacy look to them that I think it's really, really pretty. I know some people like the full panicles, but I actually 
love the semi lacy look like the one of the lava lamp and the firelight and I just made a vase of these uh, giant lilies I've got about six of them in this one vase and it's filling up so beautifully and looking through this part of the the back patio you can see I've got uh, two petunia plants that I've in the container again those I sold from seeds and they have that sort of magenta deep pink color with the sort of um, um, white center to them that looks really really pretty and here I just have a random mix of uh, Tabasco plants we don't eat too many hot peppers but uh, we do love the fruit of the Tabasco plants because it comes that yellow orange and red color that's really pretty and then I've got more of the Calabracoas uh, that I planted uh, from seed and again some of these are deep blue color and uh, I think one of these three is a sort of a pink color that's really pretty as well and in this container here, I've got, again, a mix of the petunia that I showed you earlier, some mobilia that I planted from seed, some of the royal carpet alyssum, and even some of the snapdragons uh, that I've got there in the middle. And the centerpiece of this container is actually the um, hydrangea that I actually sow and grew from seed last year. Now, I have not seen it bloom yet, and it hasn't, I've been checking to see if it has budded up yet, but it doesn't seem like um, it's going to be flowering for me this year. But I love the fact that it's got a reddish color stem that looks really, really pretty. So. Uh, fingers crossed that it might bloom for me this year. If not, uh, hopefully it will bloom for me next year. And I don't know if I've uh, told you yet, but since cutting back my roses all the way to about 18 inches tall, I've noticed that I've had very few Japanese beetles in the garden. So I'm really, really thankful for that. And for those of us that know about the effects of Japanese beetles um, in our gardens, you probably understand and can relate to the, the fear that I go through every single year around this time because I know that if I don't do anything about it, the Japanese beetles would come and they would decimate the entire garden. They eat every leaf and every rosebud on my plant. And that means I am constantly out here early in the morning and late in the evening when they're most inactive and try to tap them onto a bowl of and trap them into a bowl of soap water. It actually sounds very inhumane, but other than that, I'm, I don't really know what else to do because I am just not comfortable with spraying anything else. Now I do, however, use the spore, the nematode spores that uh, we um, put out in fall and spring, which is twice a year. So I did it last year, I did it the year before. So this year I'm thinking because I did that two years in a row, it might have helped lower down the population of Japanese beetles in my garden. And the next container that I've got here is a bobo stander that I actually transplanted from the garden this past spring. And uh, it is blooming beautifully. And I, I love the blooms on this bobo because it's sort of more compact uh, with the florets tightly packed together. That's just, I think, really, really pretty. And uh, the uh, base of this planter, again, has some of the colobracoas that I have in the other containers. And like uh, I said before, this was also a surprise for me because I, um, when I planted, they were tiny plants. So uh, the color of all these blooms are very different than the colobracoas um, that I actually collected the seeds from. So very, very pretty. So this one is like a light blush pink and I've got a sort of a lavender uh, color here that's got a yellow throat that looks really pretty as well and another purple uh, blue color uh, color on this other side 
and in between uh, underneath is just a mass of lobelia now I have never planted lobelia in this mass of a container before but I actually really really love the look of it and I don't know if you noticed but I love blue lavender purple shades uh, when it comes to flowers so I think I'm in love with this lobelia this year and I think it's just so simple and yet so pretty and so easy to sow and grow as well and here in this container it is my um, quick fire fab and I know I've said it before but I am loving loving this quick fire fab I think it has quickly gained all the love in my heart because I have always um, loved the full panicle of the limelight that starts to bloom in for us in late July August but this bloomed for us in June late June and it has been nothing but provides so much beauty uh, in this container and I love that sort of look with the lobelia all kind of mixed in together so I can't wait to see how this is going to perform for me next year because I don't know if you remember but this was a tiny piece that uh, I actually transplanted from the mother plant at the front garden so anyway I think it's just a stunning combination with lobelia and look blue and white isn't that the most beautiful thing ever I just just, I think I'm in love with Lobelia now and um, I think this is definitely going to be a combination that I will be planting again and again and again and I love this combination here with this bobo tree um, that I've got here I think this is its third year now and with the uh, oriental lilies uh, sort of hanging or towering over it I think it looks really really pretty and right beneath that uh, bobo tree, I've got two blue jangles. And I'm actually quite surprised by the fact that they've got their blooms uh, on them at this moment because these don't usually bloom for me, especially after that harsh winter that we had this past year. And here is a firelight uh, hydrangea that I've got on the west side. And as you can see, compared to the firelight on the east side, uh, the one on the west side, it's actually uh, full white uh, right now. So if you look closely, you're gonna see that uh, this firelight also is showing sign of chlorosis. And you can also um, tell by looking at the foliage, like here, for example, when you see that dark vein with the yellow color around the foliage, that means it does have chlorosis. So it's not able to um, uptake iron from the soil. So I did check the pH uh, and it's about 6.9, which is good. So I don't think it has to do with the pH of the soil, but I can see that some of the foliage for example like this one it's actually okay whereas uh, some of the other foliage it's um, showing sign of closes so my guess is that some of the roots may have been damaged by squirrels that dig into the the soil around the uh, the base and here is a good example of what squirrels like to do around the root ball of uh, my plant. So this I have are the three light your angel roses and already they started digging in the garden here. And I actually found a bigger hole like that underneath the firelight the other day. So I think that might be the reason why uh, the plant is sort of in uh, stress mode right now. And I also lost a few of my uh, serrano lilies the other day because the squirrels try to dig below and, and pull up half of the uh, lily bulbs and they were actually on the um, soil surface half eaten so I actually threw that away and so that's why these three lilies are sort of looking like they're about to fall because they were part of that group of lilies that were dug up by the squirrels in our garden. But the firelight blooms are, I think, most gorgeous at this time. I love, love, like I said before, the semi sort of lacy effect of the firelight panicles. And in the next few weeks or so, it's gonna start to turn that sort of light blush pink that I think is also gorgeous as well. So really, really pretty plant to look at um, in uh, late July. 
And here I have a group of two bobo hydrangeas and this compared to the east side, it's in full bloom and the panicles are in sort of uh, semi white green color combo that I love. And this is very characteristic of what bobo panicles look like around this time. So I think the other side is a little bit behind. And right behind the bobos are the Wester Platy and the Pilu Clematis that are almost done blooming. And uh, in the next a few days or so, I will probably cut all of this down all the way to the ground and let it reflush back up for it to um, form the second flush of blooms that we get in uh, end of August and into September. And here I've got uh, six plants of the panicle hydrangeas that I sold from seed this past spring and they are putting on some growth um, at the moment. You can kind of see this one, it looks like it's looking pretty good. I've got about one, two, three, four, five sets of uh, true leaves and it's still pushing out new growth. Um, I've got this one, I think most of them are in the same state of growth. So next thing you know, I'm gonna have some mechanical hydrangeas that are gonna be unique. <laughs> only in my garden so anyway um, I still have not seen the blooms on the one that I sold last year yet so I don't know what these will be like but uh, it's pretty exciting just being curious and I want to know what uh, the seeds produce it's probably not gonna look like anything that I have in the garden but uh, regardless I think it's kind of fun right just to kind of experiment with things and in this container, I don't know if you notice, I've got the bobo that I divided from the garden this past spring, and I've got lots of the same petunia that I planted uh, in the other containers. But if you look closely, you can see that I've got the white petunia there that looks like it's growing into a tree. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that has ever been seen before, but you can kind of look, you can see that. Do you see that? It's growing like tall instead of draping down the sides. It looks like it's growing to a tree like so I know I think it's strange I was gonna pull it but uh, I don't know it looks kind of strange but at the same time intriguing for me and right behind the container is the uh, little lime container that I've got here and uh, this one is about to bloom and you can kind of see that the blooms right now are sort of a greenish uh, color and but eventually they will uh, turn a bit creamy uh, green and then creamy yellow and then eventually face to a pinkish sort of shade of uh, cream color and it's absolutely gorgeous and I love love this one and um, it was um, in the garden last year at the front garden which I divided and got a uh, stander out of this plus a bush now I did lose one of these last year uh, due to the cold harsh winter but luckily this one survived and that's the thing about um, planting um, hydrangeas in containers. Sometimes, if you're not careful, uh, we get a sort of a surprise winter uh, like we did last time and some plants may not come back. So anytime you plant things in containers, it's always a risk that they may not come back. So you try to plant in such a way that the plant is at least two zones below our garden zone and that the containers um, should be double wall and uh, in largest size possible. So I try to aim for at least 18 to 20 inches wide and deep so that I have a larger soil reservoir and that will keep the root ball of the hydrangea well insulated and better prepare for our uh, winter. So right in the back there against the fence, I have the Sonic Reblooming Wygelia. Now, normally after the first flush that I get in the spring, I usually prune these way back. But this year, I actually decided to leave everything because I actually like the the branches against the back fence like that. I think that looks really pretty and it provides a beautiful backdrop for the bobos once they come in full bloom. And right behind the bobos here, um, if you look closely, you'll be able to see there is a little quick fire in the back there. 
the little quick fire um, it's shaded so much by the bobo in front that it is actually just starting to form buds right now there are some that are in bloom but there are also tons of buds here you can see that it's still forming and I was hoping that it would grow a little bit faster and be able to uh, grow taller and reach for the sun so that it won't be much shaded by the bobo in front but uh, looks like I was wrong so um, uh, hopefully next year when it grows a little bit taller and uh, it will be able to reach for the sun and, and, and be able to bloom a little bit sooner for me. And here is the uh, limelight tree that I have on the west side of the garden. Although there are some uh, panicles that have started to form a bit more white than the other side. So compared to the other limelight tree on the east side, I think the one on the west side is a little bit slower in terms of uh, bloom development. So that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you all next time. Take care everyone. Bye bye for now.